If you're a beginner to art journaling, creating on tags might be the perfect place to start. And in this video tutorial, I'm not going to show you one tag, I'm going to show you two. And I'm going to keep it super simple using what I call whore art journal supplies that you'll want to add to your stash. So this tag, it measures eight inches by four. I cut it out of mixed media paper. It's not something that I purchased. I don't even remember putting a coat of gesso on this. I am simply applying two colors of paint to the background. I have chosen to use Bright Aqua and Quinacridone Magenta. I know that these two colors, when they mix wet on wet, they make a nice purple. So then I've added a third color. This is just plain acrylic paint. I'm using Liquitex Basics, but you can use any paint that you, acrylic paint that you have. I'm just applying it wet on wet right onto the background. This is giving me the base coat of color and the randomness that I'm applying it is adding some texture, some pattern very easily and it didn't cost you anything to do that. All I did to make this tag is I ripped out a piece of mixed media paper out of my Canson Mixed Media Art Journal. The makeup sponge I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just adding a little bit more color. I want some areas that are straight pink, some that are kind of making that purple color, as well as some more of that aqua color. So if you're a beginner, write down that color combination because it's one that you can use again and again. Now you'll see the cardboard that's sitting there to the left. I'm using that cardboard as a mark maker. So earlier that day, I built a stash builder. Now this is a napkin ply. I use napkins in my art and I you always peel off the excess plies. Here I'm just using that cardboard and I am stamping on the napkin. This is basically turning this into a designer collage paper. You don't need to go buy something in order to have the collage paper. And when I glue this down onto the tag, what's white is going to disappear and become transparent. And you're only going to see the black marks. You're going to see that in a bit. Now, you can do it with black, but you can do it with white. So here I'm doing the same thing. I've just taken that cardboard and I'm stamping randomly on this excess ply of napkin. Now, if you don't have napkins that have designs, you can just get those white napkins, peel off the individual layers and stamp on that. Any napkin will do. Now it's hard to see where the white is stamped, but again, what is left raw napkin is going to become transparent and you're only going to see those white marks when I glue this down. So now that this is completely dry and there I have my tag with the base color, I am just going to be able to rip whatever amount I want of this collage paper napkin and fit it on my background. So now again, wherever there is raw napkin, you are going to see the colors that are in the base shine through. They're going to show through. And stamping it on the tissue paper means that if it's less than perfect or it's not exactly what you want, you haven't stamped it right onto your background and wrecked your background. And as a beginner, sometimes we're a little worried that we're going to wreck it when we stamp. But here you get to select exactly what portion of that napkin tissue paper that you've created. Speaking of tissue paper, you can do the stamping on tissue paper if that's what you have and you don't have the napkin plies. It may not go quite as transparent, but it'll give a slightly different effect. So you can see I'm using gel fluid matte medium here and to glue this down. You can use Mod Podge if you have it, decoupage, that'll work as well. I use a good coat of it 
And even though it goes on cloudy, it will dry clear. And you're going to see that once this is a completely dry. Now, the rest of the stuff that's stamped on that napkin, it's just going into my stash and I can use it on other art journal pages, tags, what have you. So here's the black one. So again, I'm just going to isolate whatever portion of this I think I want. And I can be selective. I try to rip off any excess of the napkin that I don't want. It's going to go transparent, but you know, it doesn't add bulk. The napkin will add some texture to what you glue it on. Now I'm working on a tag. If you want to work on an art journal page and follow these same steps, it'll work. It doesn't matter what size you're working on. And you can audition where you want them. Place them and say, how does it look? How does it look? And again, as a beginner, that might be something you're not trusting your instincts just yet. So this gives you options and you can have a little bit more confidence in what you're doing. Now I prefer using the Fluid Matte Medium. This is the Liquitex brand. I buy it in bulk and that or in a larger size because the price point is a lot more is a lot lower so now that it's dry you can see how the colors have shone through where the napkin was now i am just going to edge or shade around the edge of my tag here with black acrylic paint. I'm going to link that video. It's a great video learning how to shade or highlight using the angle brush and my floating acrylic technique. I'm just going around very, very easily. And this just kind of outlines my tag. And I would say I edge pretty much every page and project that I do. So this is something that you may want to learn and add to your repertoire of techniques to do. So now we want to addition the focal image. And I have a pile of focal images in a bin off to the side. And I'm just taking them and putting them on and saying, how does it look with what I have there? Some are too small, some are too big. You can layer them up, you can combine several, you can use stamped images, you can use magazine images. It's good to have a stash off to the side and then you can do what I'm doing, just try them out. And then I put them down on the left, I have the discard pile and up to the top I have an, of a, a pile that is like, oh yeah, that might work. I've got Julie Nutting dolls, but you can use magazine cutouts of people. I like this look. This is a doodle flower that I, I had stamped out the uh, print on and then I just drew the doodle flower. It's in my stash. Actually, I photocopied it once I got it done, so I made more of them. And I like how I put the napkin flower. That's what you the pink flower is. It's just napkin that's been glued onto copy paper and cut out. So I've combined three elements that I had in my stash to make my focal image. I might add the butterfly too. Well, no, I don't think so. I like that pink flower. It's not quite the same pink in the background, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. So now I'm just finalizing exactly where I want that. I'm just going to use the leaves of this. This was actually a stenciled uh, flower. But again, you can use a cutout from a magazine. Um, seed catalogs have nice pictures, calendars. You can use them as they are, or you can cut out parts of them and combine. I look to my digital sentiment pack. This is my Choosing Joy sentiment pack. And I picked something that had a bold black font. 
because it stands out on that background. Now on that doodle flower, I have some stamped text. Now if you have text stamp or script stamp, that is a good basic one to add to your mixed media art journaling supplies. You will get a lot of use of it. But because it's on the doodle flower, I want to add it to my background. So I grab out my archival ink. Archival ink is permanent when dry, which means if I add wet to it afterwards, it's not going to um, reactivate and smudge. talking about that napkin flower if you have napkins you can just glue them down with the fluid matte medium or mod podge onto the copy paper and cut out little elements and have those focal images ready to go i'm just cutting off some of the excess of the paper around my digital sentiment pack now digital sentiment packs have the sentiments there are anywhere from 25 to 40 different sentiments on there in different fonts. And because they're digital, you can make them larger, make them smaller and fit whatever you're working on. And my all my digital sentiment packs, they're theme-based, they are available for purchase at ninniesnapkins.com. I will link them in the description box below. So I glued that pink flower on top of my doodle flower and then I'm gluing down the leaf and then I'm going to glue down the doodle flower. Again, I'm using my fluid matte medium. I'm going to put a coat of that on the top and that's just going to seal the paper, turn it into a non-porous surface. So if I want to add or I want to shade, it's not going to just soak into the raw paper. And to fit my composition, I cut apart my sentiment, which is something you can do as well. So if you want to maximize your dollar value, getting a digital sentiment pack, be it mine or somebody else's, you're going to get a lot more for your money. Sentiment stamps are, are quite expensive and you only get what, you know, how many in a pack. So I wanted to make that flower the color that I used in the back. So I grabbed my quinacridone magenta, I watered it down a little bit, and I'm just putting a wash of color on top. So even if you don't have the perfect color match, you can alter it. And no one's the wiser. Here I'm just adding a little bit of black in the center. If you don't have a stencil that or stamp that has leaves, you can just draw leaves and do some stamping on it to make them a little bit more interesting and cut out the leaf shape. It's a very basic shape, so don't fret. Here I'm using that same shading technique that I edged the paper with and going around the doodle flower. This adds so much interest to the tag. It makes the doodle flower stand out. kind of outlines it. If you don't want to try this technique, you can take a felt pen, a marker, and outline it to make it stand out, if that's what you like. But don't be afraid of trying something new. The first time you do it, it may or may not work. The second time, it's going to be better. The third time, you only get as good as what you are doing. you got to practice it. Just adding a little bit more shading and interest to my tag focal image. Here's my Posca pan, and I'm just outlining my sentiment. Then I decide I'm just going to do dash work all the way around my tag.
I like the colors, the bold color, bold, bright colors with the black and white. That gives a lot of contrast. I'm just adding a little bit of line work, just extending that cardboard uh, stamping that I did. Just want a little bit more. So I'm just adding to it. So this really only used a text stamp, or you could have made that doodle flower out of book paper. And there's your text. It was a napkin, and there was a stencil there with a leaf. But again, I've told you how you can use what you have. That could be out of a magazine. And I'm splattering with gold paint. I like using my fan brush to splatter with, but you can use any brush. Just test it out to see what kind of splatters you're getting. Are they too big, too small? So here are some close-ups of the finished tag. I love how this turned out. And it's very easy and very doable. So this is a gel print that I did create it using a stencil that had those dangles. And I will try to find the name of the stencil and put it in the description box. It is from TCW. Now I am just cutting out the dangling part with a little bit of the dark blue on the side. But you know what? If you don't have this, you can just raw cut it or draw this on your own on some navy colored paper. You don't necessarily need to have the stencil in order to recreate it. I had this in my stash, so I'm trying to use what I have in my stash. And as many times as I've looked at this collage paper and thought, oh, it's nice, I hadn't thought I could cut it out before. I've also pulled some other collage papers. There's the red orange part of a starfish that I did in another project. And there's that burnt or um, yellow oxide color. I pulled those colors. I'm thinking, okay, that's the color scheme that I want. So when I'm picking color schemes, I'm looking at things that I have in my stash, magazine pictures, and use that as guidance and inspiration about what to do, and then use your paints to create it. I did think I was going to use those collage papers with it, but I decided not to use those collage papers. Instead, I'm just going to use my paints. So here's yellow oxide and burnt sienna, and I'm putting a little bit of white gesso in there. And again, I am just putting this on with a makeup sponge. It isn't easier to get the paint down. I want some areas that are just more burnt sienna, some that are mixed, and some are more that yellow oxide. I just built in interest. And at this stage, I don't know what focal image I'm going to use. I'm just focused on making a colorful background. I'm using the makeup sponge and putting some of that black around the edge. And then I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna dangle these here and there. I'm going to put that as a collage in image. And then uh, that is a stamped image. That's a Julie Nutting stamp image. But you can use a magazine girl if you want. You don't have to buy the stamps, although I have used those Julie Nutting dolls a lot in my tags and coasters and magnets and art journal pages. So if you like them, that might be something that you want to start investing in. I'll link that in the description box. You can get them at Amazon. So I have a couple different ones and I have them stamped out already in my stash. Having things stamped out and cut out and in your stash really saves you time in there. So here I'm using that cardboard again. I'm putting some of uh, the burnt sienna paint. I should have used black for a little bit more contrast on it and just using it like a stamp. Free stamp. 
And I love, love, love the organic feel of that. So don't think you have to buy everything to be able to create. You do not need to buy all the products, the products that you see me using. You're going to see me using again and again and again. And the ones that I recommend are ones that I get a lot of use of. So they're well worth it. So now I'm putting these elements back in. I am, I'm not 100% sure at this time what I want to do with it, where I want them to go. I have a basic idea. I haven't firmed up my plan yet. So I think here in the delay, I am looking for something to add, something more to the background. I'm loving what I have there. And I did, I grabbed, this is kind of a cross hatch stamp, good basic ones. If you have embroidery mesh, you can use it as a stamp. What you want is any fine stamp. You could use that text stamp that you have or script stamp would be good, but you want smaller scale. It's just kind of grunging it up a little bit. And then I'm using the makeup sponge to edge this one. Last time I edged it with the the shading technique, here's another way that you can do it. Both give a slightly different effect. You pick what you like. I've often combined both of them as well. Now, here's another stamp that I have used and used and used, my dot stamp. Actually, it's double that size. I cut it in half to make it easier to stamp with. And I want to add some of the circles. I have those dangling circles. So I want to add that to my background. Uh, but I didn't want to use black or some high contrast. So I'm putting this on with gold. So the circles are in the background and in the what I'm building to be my focal image. And I'm using this dot stamp. So another good basic. I will link that. But find anything that is a dot like that. I, again, it's something that I have used and used and used. A real workhorse. And here I go in with some of the burnt sienna and add it. So we've added lots of layers to our background. And that's what makes a successful layer. So now I have my focal image. Now her hair was yellow oxide and it wasn't enough of a contrast so I'm adding some dark brown and a little bit of black and just painting over it just to make it stand out on the background I have now then I painted her dress that yellow oxide because I thought that was a good one. I didn't want to go navy, although you could have because there's the navy on those, those that stenciled collage paper I cut out. And once again, I'm using my fluid matte medium to glue and seal everything down. This Julie Nutting doll does have legs. The stamp has legs, but I cut it off for the purpose of the tag. If I was doing it on an art journal page, not. Oh, so here we are painting the dress. I think I have the footage in the wrong order. Oops. Not sure how that happened, but. I apologize. So the dress wasn't showing up when I glued it down. So I grabbed some of that burnt sienna and I'm painting over top of it 
changing the color of the dress. If you don't like something and you've used acrylic paint, let it dry and then paint over it. There's nothing that you can do that you can't undo. Now I know I there's not a lot of contrast here either, but I do go in and I will be shading. So some of that area with those circles, there wasn't any navy, so I'm just taking my Prussian blue actually, which is a favorite color of mine. Good basic, I've gone through tubes and tubes of that. And I'm just making sure that I have a good amount of that blue around the dangles. So if you're drawing them, you can paint the dangles. And I'm splattering with that Prussian blue. And I just thin my paint down and I splatter. And I didn't even bother grabbing my fan brush here. Here I'm using just the liner brush. This is the short and sweet sentiment pack. It has phrases that are one to four words long. I've got them black lettering on a white background and white lettering on a black background. So I've cut out several of them and I'm just going to glue them into the dangles there. This is a great one if you're making ATCs, five by seven, smaller art. And now we have some close-ups of this finished one. Which tag do you like better? Why? I hope you take something out of this video find it useful, and try something new. Until next time, go get creative.